Welcome to another episode of Unlicensed Therapy with me, Ari Manis. I'm being kind of quiet because Craig Cohn is in the other room sleeping. We are in Nashville. This is the comedy condo that Zanies, the comedy club, has that they're putting us up in. We performed there tonight. It was awesome. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for bringing me to Craig. Afterwards, we went to Haiti B's, the Nashville hot chicken place down the street. It was mm, 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 yummy. I know there's better places is what the locals say. I liked it. I was happy with it. What else? Today, we have Brian Moses on. He's great. He's hilarious. He created the roast battle. If you're not familiar with it, it's on Comedy Central. It's international. They have one in Europe, in Australia, in New York. It all started in the bedroom of the comedy store. It has an interesting story. And so does Brian. I hope you enjoy the episode with Brian Moses. Clearly need it. It doesn't make any sense, Ari. This is a horrible idea. You're listening to you listening to unlicensed, 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 unlicensed therapy with Ari Manis. Ari Manis. It took you 130 fucking one people and be like, you know, I should give Moses something. I've had you on. On this one? Yeah, but it was when I did it in the comedy store basement and it was audio only. So uh, long, so this was, is wow. This early is, days. This is what, like 30 years in the making then. Yeah, I've been doing the podcast a while, but I wasn't consistent with it in the beginning. Yeah, now you've got a whole new setup now. Now I'm consistent. It took you this it. long to invite me back. Well, it was, you know, people had to get ready. I had to get ready. I had to work up the steam to I do it. it. I'm still not ready, but sometimes you just got to go for it. Shout out Liquid Death. Shout out to Liquid Death, the official podcast, Melrose podcast sponsor. What do you do? Uh, what do you do today so far? It's 9.30 in the morning for everyone listening. This is the earliest podcast I've ever done. Oh, you're welcome. Um you. No, I woke up. That's it. I came here. Period. Yeah. Okay. You said you wake up at 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Usually if I can't sleep, but ever since we've opened up again, especially because my spots are always late, so I'm mm -hmm. always like, oh, yeah, I can probably, you know. But I didn't go to bed till like, I don't know, 2 or 3 because obviously adrenaline after you get off stage and it takes a second, you're reeling about your set, whether it was good or bad. And then you're do just you get adrenaline for those late night sets? All right, we all get adrenaline from those late night sets, or yeah. just sets in general. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it doesn't matter what time of day you're going up. We can go up right, literally, we can go up across the street and go do like a homeless encampment, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll still get adrenaline from whatever the experience is because you're we're right. public speaking in front of strangers. You know, you're right, you're right. Yeah, even a shitty open mic, I get a little adrenaline. Legit, yeah, yeah, you're gonna yeah. be up for the next few like hours, and then you're gonna crash really hard for maybe forty five minutes, right? You may not get actual REM sleep. But maybe you do, right? So maybe you do. But I, I don't know if I did. Uh, but yeah, so I woke up a little later than I normally normally like to, like eight forty five ish, and then uh, yeah, I had my my vitamins. Uh, I had uh, you know no ACV today. What's ACV? I had, uh, apple cider vinegar. You know the, you do that every day usually. Mostly. I mean, ever since JMS told me she was doing it, Jessica Michelle Singleton, and then Brody was always like a big advocate of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm inconsistent, but it's, it's I keep funny. some in my fridge. And then every time I go to look at it, it mm -hmm. has gone bad and I've never used it because Ooh. it's, it doesn't taste good. It's, it's like awful. medicine. It's, it's acidic. Yeah. It's like, it really yeah. like dries out your body. I don't know how it's good for you. So. <laughs> oh, you're saying it doesn't make you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. I always feel nauseous after, I mean, you know, I'll take it with water usually. Mm -hmm. Like a cup and I'll just drop the shot in there or whatever and it's. Oh, you make a little mixed drink. Yeah, you're apple. supposed to. They say, oh. if, yeah, if you just like take the shot, you're just, you're going to crush your, your stomach lining. See, that's why I always thought it was bad because I would take a shot and I'd be like, this is awful. Yeah, why yeah. do people? <laughs> that's what I thought too. I was taking yeah. shots forever. Then I get red yeah. and they're just like, no. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that makes way more sense. Now I'm learning. Yeah. I want to learn about you today because I've known you for close to probably a decade. But I don't really know you. Not a lot of people do. But today they're going to. 
You think so? After listening to this, if you're if you're willing to be open with me. I've been pretty open. I think, I think you're think. an open guy in yeah. general. Let's do it. Let's where, have some fun. Where are you from? Where am I from? Uh, gosh. I guess the longest place I was would actually probably have to be here. Uh, but I went to junior high and high school in a place called China Lake, Ridgecrest, California, which is the high desert, which is near Mammoth Mountain, which is, you know, if you go towards Barstow, you, you might see a sign that says Ridgecrest. Why were you there? Uh, the military base. My, I'm a military brat. My oh, dad's in the Navy. that explains San Diego? Uh, no, that's why I went. I went to San Diego on my own. Oh, okay, got um, it. But I lived in. Was born here in Los Angeles. Uh, I think when I'm like three or four, we moved to this military base my dad's stationed at called China Lake. Right, my sister's born, and then we moved to a place in Central California, uh, Lamore, Hanford, Fresno area, Visalia, uh, and then I'm there until like probably into grade school for the most part. And then junior high, we moved back to Ridgecrest. My dad gets stationed back in China Lake Ridgecrest. So there's a Navy base in China Lake Ridgecrest? Yeah, there's they, they test weapons out, in, you know, because the, the military owns like a million acres of desert. Right. And they just test the shit out of the weapons out there. Is that what your dad did? He tested weapons? He does? I don't think about Liberty to talk about what my dad does. He's got a crazy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, probably. Secret? Yeah, no, he's uh what, he, what does he tell people? If no, he, no, he was an air, he was an aircraft street. mechanic in the military in the uh, in the navy. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was like a government contractor. I don't know what that means, but that's what she was doing. So they were, you know, they both worked for the military. That was the big industry in those in the places that we were at. So it was easier to get a job for the government. Were they officers or NCOs? No, they were enlisted. Or my no, enlisted. my mom wasn't even enlisted. She was just working for the government. She your, was Department of Defense, like a civil. Your servant. mom's civilian, so she was the bread mm -hmm. breadwinner. No, dad was. Dad was, and your dad was a. NCO in the military, mm -hmm. enlisted mm -hmm. in the military. Navy. I don't know what that means. Well, NCO. there's did he go to college? Did Pops go to college? I mean, like, yeah. no, he didn't get a, a degree. Right. So so there's like uh, you know, the uh not underclass, I don't know what they're called. NCOs uh enlisted, and then there's the officer, mm -hmm. and the officers make more, even if someone's been in the military 30 years, 20 years, the off some new college grad comes oh, in yeah. as an officer, they get mm -hmm. paid more. So it's like a Yeah, because there's that enlisted rank, and then there's the, yeah, the officer rank. Yeah, totally. And but usually they get, if you go to get, college, yeah. Yeah, but they still get good benefits either way. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I grew up pretty middle class for the most part. I mean, like, we grew up in, in weird um, military areas. So, I mean, the median income was probably whatever – People are making on the base. I mean, you have engineers and like that kind of a thing, so the median goes up. Um, but for enlisted guys, I mean, it's like it's pretty low income to middle class, right? If you become a chief, uh, and then you can actually apply for officer, right? If you become mm -hmm. enlisted enough, you get you keep going up the rank, kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah. Did you think you were going to join the military at any point? Yeah, I got a girl pregnant. Um, I think right out of high school. Your dad? No. Aborted? No. Natural abortion. Miscarriage. Go. God's. God's God's abortion. Um But uh yeah, yeah. So that's when um I was thinking about joining the military, but I was also like an ROTC, you know. It was just it, oh, just, you it was went, just kind you of were the culture. J R T C in high school, but that was that was common. I mean, I don't know. It was I don't know why it was common for for me and my homeboys, but yeah, we did. Because it. you were all from military families. I mean, it was the military base. There was yeah, only like yeah. one high school. No, know? that makes sense. It was almost like a military school, even though it wasn't a military school. It's a real gated community. Yeah. I went to a military high school. Did you really? Yeah, that in sucks. Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, yeah. you're a bad kid. Yeah, but it was an army preparatory school, so even though my no one in my family was in the military, actually, I think my grandfather, who I never met, was in the Navy. So your parents just didn't want to deal with you? They didn't want to deal with me. So they just sent you to a boarding school? Yeah. That's really mean. Most people at the school were from military families. They're not most, right. but a lot of them. Right. I so, mean, like, listen, discipline, I think, is is what Americans crave, maybe, right? Um Mike Tyson even says that. He's just like, without discipline, you're, you're just kind of lost. So I think a lot of parents are just like, oh, thank God, I can just go to work, and then you can just discipline my kid, and then he'll be a contributing member to society. To their defense, which I don't know why I'm defending them, because that place sucked, but they tried to discipline me on their own. I was just too powerful for them. Really? Yeah, it was just too wild. I mean, listen, you're Jewish, right? Why didn't you like a Jewish like boarding school? <laughs> First off, I don't know if that exists. Oh no, it does. But for religious people, my yeah, family is not religious. Not religious, just uh -huh. by name. Yeah, my okay. name is the most Jewish thing about me. That's cool. And my voice, and my nose, and my hair. But, yeah, I wasn't gonna say anything because that's that would give me cancer. But I've never gone to synagogue or kept kosher. I eat bacon. I eat 
Do you no, ever... I only go to synagogue to like stake it out and then tell my white supremacist buddies what's up. So, oh right, because no, because I come from white, a really <laughs> white supremacist buddies. <laughs> well, love where, you. <laughs> with the, uh, the area of uh, California I come from, there is a there's a large contingent of um, of uh, white or not, I mean white supremacists everywhere. But I'm saying uh, guys who practice the art of white supremacy, like you know, actively being out there, skinheads, neo Nazis, that kind of a thing. So you grew up around skinheads and neo Nazis. I grew up around a lot of like hardcore, just like meth head white people. But as a black man, black full, man, black man, full black, right? Full black, baby. Yeah, you're not. I mean, I not, got. I probably got some. I, 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 you know, I've been looking at my family tree more. Uh, my family has too, because when black people get older, they, they think about you know, oh my gosh, time's passed. Um, I think we just learned that uh, I've got a lot of indigenous people from like, you know, like indigenous American in me, and uh, and some Jamaican. Which a lot is of also, and, and which some is slave. black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Those things are black too. Yeah, all the things are black. black. By the way, the indigenous person they say is probably African. You know, even if you're saying Indians, because a lot of the Moors went to India, right? So those are black people. So if you if Columbus comes over here, it's just like, oh, there's a lot of fucking dark people here, right? I just think that's a lot of black people because black people were the first shipbuilders. So, well, but those those in the Vikings. How? But you said you grew up around skinheads. So did you have any really racist experiences um, as a kid? Because I'm, nothing, I've lived nothing in the shelter violent, world. I mean, nothing violent happened to me for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some violent shit that has happened in that town. Uh, there was some violent stuff that happened at that high school before I got there. Uh, there was like a race riot. What about just verbal there. things? Have you ever been at yeah, a gas yeah, station yeah. and someone's been <laughs> like, ah. Yes. You know, you know yeah. I'm not going to say it. No, I mean, you know what's, what's funny? It's it's because I think when you grow up in a, in a uh, it was a, vi a diverse community for the most part anyway, because mm -hmm. I mean, this is Southern California, so you're going to have a large contingent of um, English as a second language uh, Mexican people, right? You're going to have a lot of Filipino folks. There's a lot of uh, white folks, right? And then mm -hmm. there's like only a few black folks. Um, so that experience, it wasn't like we were singled out a lot, um, but you definitely did get some hate Trip. Like my sister got chased by the, uh, by some KKK members. Chased? Yeah. Like on foot? Yeah, yeah like at the local fair. Yeah. What were they gonna do to her? They're gonna beat the shit out of her. Like they they huh. they drove past my house, like looking for my sister, and my little sister, my my two little sisters. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, 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 because they were like something had happened to the point of it was taunting, and then you know they they were acting big and brave and bad, and then yeah, they started chasing my sister, and then they chased them out of the fair, and then they got in their cars and started chasing them in their cars, and they drove past my house. That sounds horrible. So, were you in the house too, hiding? This was, I, you, I don't would, know if I was even in town. At this would point. you have hit, or would you have came out and, and per confronted them on behalf of your sisters? What would you have done? Yeah, you have to. <laughs> you just have to. I think I would have stayed in and hit. You, no, it's your sisters, but I mean, they also like they're, they're not idiots. You know what I mean? Like they they didn't drive to the house; they drove past the house, and they just kind of like you know lost the guys. But right. if had they, had they been scared, came to the house, like, oh, my God, protect us, then, yeah, you got to go after it, you know, whatever I guess happens. your dad's in the military probably has guns. Mm, I'm not going to say that, but, I mean. <laughs> I'm not going to say we're, we're, But we're, yeah, but we're not afraid. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wouldn't be like, I don't want to talk, you're getting shot kind of a thing, but it'd be like. I have guns. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Because you you grew up, you went to a military high school. That's true. That is why it probably <laughs> <laughs> made me love and guns yeah, there. Yeah. And you're like an aspiring theater shooter or something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm not going to say that. Right. Why would yeah, you say that? I'm not yeah. going to reveal that. Yourself? That's, yeah. you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> you're not that kind of narcissist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think all comedians are narcissists? Yes. I had this conversation last night. Yes. <laughs> so you think I'm a narcissist for real? Yes. For realsies. You have to be. This is show business. I think people forget that when you're in a town full of people who, who can only think about themselves because the industry is built on this, right? They've, mm. they've created this whole, not even illusion. This is just what it is. So, yes, you have got to have some kind of ego. And we're all on the narcissistic personality personality disorder spectrum. Not saying that we're all, it's it's like autism or like, you know, uh, Asperger's. Like, we're all going to be on a spectrum of some sort, right? Mm -hmm. Sexuality even. But when I'm talking about mental disability or mental disorder or mental instability, when it comes to narcissistic personality disorder, because remember, they used to call us sociopaths back in the day. Oh, they're two different things? Or, two different or, things. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because I think becoming a comedian, there's a lot of things that we do that are a little off the beaten path when it comes to uh, mental health. 
And I think that there was at one point I was like, God, is every single comedian a sociopath? Because they're all about themselves. It mm. feels like there's no empathy. Um, but there's levels to it, right? But this is why I think they've translated it now to narcissistic personality disorder. And I know this has been around for a long time, but I'm saying now I feel like it's such it's more of a buzzword than sociopath was back in the mid uh, 2000s teens and, and late 2000s, right? Remember that was like, oh, you're a sociopath. Now it's right. just like, oh, he's such a narcissist. He's got narcissistic personality disorder. And gaslighting is really popular. Gaslighting is another Everyone's one. Everyone's been right. saying the word gaslight. Don't gaslight me. I'm just that's, like, I'm like, what? what? Are you, yeah, what are you talking? What? Is this violent? <laughs> because that's what that is. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're poking somebody's buttons to like, to provoke something. Like gaslighting is what the fucking KKK was doing to black people. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the word has changed. The definition they bring it has changed. down to such a like such a weird micro about them. So this is why I say that everybody that we talk to in this town, because this doesn't happen in other towns, mm -hmm. right? New York, maybe a little, a little, or la uh, yeah, right. probably a lot, but less than here. Yeah, but this yeah. is all, this town's based on its feelings. So yeah, yeah, you're right. Never really thought about that, but uh, yeah, I think there's levels to Absolutely. the narcissism. Like I think I'm a healthy narcissist. I have a, You're a healthy functioning nar narcissist. Like yeah. Sherlock Holmes was a. Uh, he used to say he was a high functioning sociopath, right? So <laughs> I, I feel like a lot that. of. Yeah. I feel like a lot of um, <laughs> comedians or actors or musicians or writers or poets or you know anybody in the arts basically has to think about themselves because show business is showing yourself and then hopefully that becomes a business for you. Um, and I think that. Uh, wait, what was the question? I don't remember. But when yes. I close my eyes and I picture our community and comedians. I do think there is a spectrum of narcissism. And there is, I would say, me and you who are on, I would say even on the low end of comedian narcissists. And then there's, I'm not going to say any names, right. but there's names that we could all think of where you're like, that guy is a narcissist. Right, that guy's ego is insane and out of control. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also, I mean, there's steps to, I guess, deal with that. And, and it takes that kind of person. You know what helped actually with this? Hmm. I think my... um. Well, obviously talking to like, like talking to Benji. I remember talking to Benji about this back in like maybe 2014, and we were talking about God, are we sociopaths? Like, are, are every is every single comedian a sociopath? And then they flipped it, and they're calling us narcissists now, or people with narcissistic personality disorder. Um, I think what helped was taking this acting class I took because it's kind of it feels like group therapy because it really does have to get you out of your comfort zone, right? Because you have to be somebody else, and you really have to act like that person, or you're not doing your job, right? And you're paying all this money, so you're just like, well, I have to participate. Right. So you it really it helped. Story. And it also was like right around when Brody died too. So it was like I was so vulnerable and open at that point from taking this this we this acting class. Was it one of those ones where you you say the word the line like a hundred times to the no, other person? No, it wasn't you know like, I, about, like I, that'd Meisner. Been, that'd have been way better. I like <laughs> I like that kind of repetitive there's shit. There's this Meisner one. I don't I've never actually taken the class, yeah. but they repeat like an emotional line a hundred times till someone cries. That's amazing. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> That's I amazing. think it's lame. That's so amazing. When I watch it, I'm like, that is a, uh, uh, it was, it was just maybe I'm too in my shell. So when I watched it on on TV, I was like, I would never want to do that. Yeah. No, thank but you. I mean, that's that's really what acting and uh, that's what makes great. Um, I think it's great actors, great comedians, great everything, great musicians. I mean, it's just, it's how vulnerable do you want to get? You have yeah. a whole fucking podcast about getting vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, if you really want to get vulnerable, you're going to be great because you're really, you're sh people love to know something about somebody, right? And they yeah. can see it and feel it. We're humans. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the more expressive you are, the more in-depth you are, the more specific you are about yourself, then yeah, I think that's why I was so open because I wanted to be good at it. And I was just at that point. And then Brody dying kind of closed it up a little bit because I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just too open right now. Um, so were you doing an acting class for that exercise or were you getting a lot of audition, auditions at the time? You're like, I should probably get a little yeah, better. Yeah, I had some yeah. money at that point. So I yeah. was like, I can spend the, the fucking $8 million on the acting <laughs> class. <laughs> so then I did it. And then, uh, and not only is our acting class expensive, there's, there's, you know, the ones that have notoriety yeah. and was, so did you go to like a, mm -hmm. a good acting class? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say it's. A, I'm not gonna say it's good or bad. I'm just gonna say it, it's. It's the one that everybody takes. Right, right, right. Right. It's the one that every yeah. comedian has to take to kind of like, oh, this is the person. Um, it's the one they always recommend. Yeah. So yeah, I finally took it after like six years of like, Karen, you got to take this thing, and then seeing like all these guys who took it are like great now. The Funches, the uh, yeah. Eric Andres, um, the list goes on. Uh, so worth worth it. It was worth it. I mean, I met some cool For people. For me, would you say take it? Yeah, I would say take it. Actually, it's. Wow. It, 
Yeah, because it's it's like it's like group therapy, dude. It really is, and you're good at that. <laughs> and it's and it's funny. I mean, it's like you are you're on the same level as everybody, right? Leslie Khan. Yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was great. I, I learned a lot of things about myself and a lot of things uh, just about acting in general and just uh, I took the, my natural demeanor. The intro one. Mm -hmm. The you know the I forget it if it I forget if it's free or not. It's yeah, that either was free. free. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, I think yeah. it was the free one. And they it's the placement one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I forget they either placed me in the first one or the second class. You know, I didn't make mm -hmm. it very. I was not good enough to make it very far. But of course, they don't want you to be good enough because they want you to pay for the whole course. Yeah, but. I was ready to sign up. Then they pull you into a little room after, mm -hmm. and they basically go for the hook and sink. They're like, all right, we think you're great. You can do this. Just give me your credit card. And I was like, this feels too car sales here. I was like, I need to think about it. But I was ready to do it until they pulled me into the room to try and sell me. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't like yeah. I want to make my own decisions here. Yeah. No, they just told me like, hey, you're, you're this. Just take the intensive and you're fine. Oh, you just took the one. So That's you what, yeah. skip. See, they I didn't won. even skip. No, she's just. She was just like, you have these qualities. Just take the intensive, and you'll be fine. See, for thing. me, she's like, hey, that was great. You need. You're still at the beginner, intermediate levels. You need to take this class, this class, this class. This oh class. wow, okay. So yeah. I guess I wasn't very good. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she was just like, maybe you have a lot of things going on. Take the intensive because it's like it's all the levels. Right, right, right. So then it was intense. It's like it's three hours. A oh night. yeah, that's the one. That's it's basically a, a job. Dude, it is. It's yeah. like, it's, you go to class twice a week, I think, maybe once a week. And then, yeah, you're like, oh, it's once a week you're in class. And then every other day, you're basically working with all the people in your class. Like, you have to go to their houses. I don't know if I can handle that. Dog, either. I know. It's, it's out of your comfort zone, but it's so good for you because it really does, it gets you out of your, it, it's, it puts you in the right mindset. Do you right? think if I did, I would get a girlfriend in the class? Is that another That's bonus kind of reason? Your thing. That's kind of your thing. That's everybody's thing. I mean, I didn't get a girlfriend out of it. I didn't but you would have if you could have. If I could, if I had stayed in. No, there's, the no, right there's girl. some gorgeous people in that class. Yeah, and like single gorgeous people. The world is opening back up, and things are getting back to normal, so it seems. But still, gives me anxiety going out into the world a little bit, and not because I'm scared of catching anything, but it's just I'm not used to it. I've been used to staying inside for a year and I already had a little bit of social anxiety and with work coming back, some of the pressure from that is coming back to come up with new jokes from in my scenario or am I doing as good as my friends are doing things like that. And you go to a friend for advice, but sometimes you don't always feel listened to or like the advice is any good or maybe they're biased Really, like, you should be seeing a professional. And I know that over 50% of Americans struggle with their mental health. And that's why I use Talkspace for therapy. And some of you who listen to this might go to therapy. It's called unlicensed therapy. I attempt to give people advice. But really, you shouldn't be going to me or to a podcast. You should be going to an actual licensed therapist like at Talkspace at Talkspace.com they match you with a licensed therapist and you can get $100 off for your first month with a promo code ARI that's $100 off when you use the code ARI at Talkspace.com there's thousands of licensed therapists available for you to match with and they have tons of different specialties whether that's anxiety depression your relationship and a lot more. And honestly, I think it could help you like it did for me. So if you're a parent, a student, a millennial, just someone having a hard day, whatever you need, there's all sorts of reasons why you should talk to a therapist. I would recommend Talkspace.com. Use the promo code Ari for a $100 off and get help. I don't know. I you feel too vulnerable. I don't know. It's and you're like going to people's houses. You know, if like yeah. if you're looking for that kind of a thing, then sure. But I don't know if you're gonna be a better actor because of that. Because they'll be focused. no, no, no. Because no. yeah, they'll be focused on like oh shoot, all right. Well, no, that would just be a yeah. bonus. That would just be another incentive right. to signing up. Like yeah. Also, there's a bunch of hotties in the class. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah if we're still allowed to say that, you know, because they're getting rid of people for saying people are good looking now. So really, like, oh, he's assaulting me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. It's out of control. So 
rewinding a little bit, you were this military brat. You Still grew up, are, yeah. Grew up in a town, mm -hmm. in a nice little small town in Mammoth. Yeah, no, like right below Mammoth, like in the in the high desert. It's like I love it's, Mammoth. Yeah, that's yeah. They have a lot of. Uh, I love skiing and snowboarding. Really? Yeah. You're really white, huh? <laughs> I guess so. It's like your thing, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's because you have to have like money to do those sports. My parents had money. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so winter sports, yeah. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, skiing in somebody's very expensive. It's just it's a hundred dollars for the day just for the lift ticket. There you go. Yeah. So it's kind of like golfing. That's another one. Yeah, I'm just like yeah. I mean, golfing's cool. Golfing's expensive though. Yeah, exactly. Because you got to think, even if you have all the equipment, right? You're, you're spending for the day at the cheapest golf course. You're spending twenty bucks. The cheapest one. That's for a shitty one. Yeah, where is that? There's like par threes around. Oh, town okay. Where you twenty just, bucks, huh? For yeah. a par three? Yeah, I think so. All right, I guess just, I'll start at the bottom. You could. I'll who's into golf bottom. right now? Uh, Everybody. Everybody who's over 30 is into golf. It's shit is crazy, actually. <laughs> Millennials love golf. Golf, it's, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, maybe kind of like that acting class. It's therapeutic a little bit because Yeah, because I feel like Gen precise. Xers are really into, like, softball. They're like, oh, let's go drink and play softball. And then, like, like softball, Millennials yeah. are just like, let's go drink and play golf. Oh, yeah, it's like I, I've seen a, a, a surgeons, but Not mostly a men. A surgeons, mostly men though, right? Not a lot of chicks play play golf, but they're more apt to it. I feel like they're they like, would, yeah, some do for sure. I've seen. I mean, it's, yeah. it's all yeah, it's all over the uh, you know, the twitters, you know, and the, the twitters only on two coasts, so I'm assuming all the uh, that's true. You know. Yeah, Twitter is a bunch of libs. Mm -hmm. What made you move to San Diego? Uh, after I got that girl pregnant, and she miscarried. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was like a relief, obviously. She miscarried, or not obviously. It but was, it was what bittersweet. it was. Um, we, I mean, God, I was, I was younger than her, so it was, it wasn't good for us, either of us. Um, and she was going through a lot of things, you know. And was she your girlfriend at the time? Or oh just, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It was my first. She was my first everything. First um, time. I loved her. God. Anyway, who uh, broke up? Who broke up with who? I had to break with her, <laughs> but I mean, it was always like an off and it wasn't even off and on. It was just like I was I I was in love. You know, yeah. she was. Oh, I've been there. You know what I mean? She was my yeah. first though, so like I don't even know what uh, what was happening to me in my feelings. Mm -hmm. Like I I was doing things as a youth that I had never done or ever thought I would do, just because I had this feeling of I can't lose this person or right. You know, it's mm -hmm. like there's a desperation that, that that's what it's that your is. first one. You don't know how to handle it. You don't know right. And I didn't know Dude. if she really liked me. I mean, I know she liked me. Obviously, we were dating, but then it was like I feel like I'm in love here, and she's just like. Do whatever the fuck she wants, you know? And I'm like, well, does she love me? Well, obviously, she does. She's, you know, Were she's you her here. first or no? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, no. no, I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, finally, you realize, okay, this relationship's a little toxic. I guess. I, I mean, yeah. The out. only way I could I could get out of it was moving. Because I, I, I knew if I stayed in town, I was going to. And that's what happens in all small towns. It's like, well, I'm going to see her around. I'll be fine. I can be strong enough. But, like, no, nah, you have to. You ha I had to fucking move. I had to unplug myself. So that was why you moved, was to get away from the broad. Only reason I moved. Wow. But you picked and also, I wanted to go to San Diego. Yeah, you picked a dope yeah, city. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. like, I'm not going to L.A. You know, I was like. How come? I had a lot of family down here. I didn't like L.A. a lot. You know, as a kid, I mean, like, until I became an adult and saw L.A., I was like, oh, this is why everybody loves L.A. It's so dope. But before that, it was just like, you skateboard down here a little bit. You see your family. You play ball a little bit. You know what I mean? Like. That's what I knew about LA, and it was also like it's, it's crazy dangerous. That's all you hear about, and and because we're in the LA market, so all I get is all the LA news, mm -hmm. and all you hear about is just how crazy it is down here. You're just like, all right, my family's down there, you know, I have like you know, and with people in the family in LA, you get to see a lot of like what's happening. You know, like I I got homeless fam family members, right? And there's a big homeless population here I didn't in know Los you're Angeles. A homeless family member. Who would know that? I don't talk about that to yeah. anybody, or like I don't broadcast it, but. I've got some, I had some gang members, you know, I've got some gang member, family members, that kind of a thing. So like all this shit that happens in Los Angeles was happening in my family. So I was just like, well, I don't want to fall into that. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm right. weak minded and I will. I'm just like, it could. Eh, I, nobody's in San Diego. Let me go check that out. Cause that's cool. Every time I go down there, I feel good. Every time I go to LA, I feel like oh, my family's here. So yeah. when you were moving to San Diego, did you have, at this point you were how old? San Diego was 17, 18? No, Seven. no, I was 18, yeah. Okay, so a brand new adult, just yeah. graduated high school, I assume. No, no, I was, I was, because I got this girl, 
this girl. I got the love of your life. The first I got, love of your life. Yeah, I got yeah, I got my high school girlfriend pregnant out of high school. She was already a freshman in college, and I think I was entering. And then uh okay. yeah, I think it was the yeah, it was like the fall. Yeah. So, yeah so, like the so, fall into the winter into the school. new year. Yeah, right definitely after, after high, high school. school. Yeah. And you, were you gonna go to college in San Diego or just go? Yeah, I was gonna go, yeah. Was okay, so you're going to college and did you have in this at this point, you're eighteen, mm-hmm. did you have any idea that you were gonna be doing stand up comedy no, or no. any showbiz type thing? You're just like, I'm gonna go to San Diego, it's a dope I'm gonna go to city. San Diego, go to college. I'm gonna try to go to school with my my you know, my homeboys, my best friend kind of a thing. Um mm-hmm. And try to play basketball for the local JC and see what happens, kind of a thing. Oh, so you were really in a basketball at this mm-hmm. at this point? I wanted to, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I know you play now in the comedy league. But yeah, I mean, never... I, I, my my skills have diminished. I mean, I, I've never watched, but yeah, yeah, I know that the the guys who are looked at as like really good is what Rick Glassman. I mean, Rick's a, like Rick. Rick could have been pro. I feel like in, in some league in some European city. Really? He could, yeah, he's Rick, that good. Rick's got huge hands. He's coordinated. He's a little athletic. You know. Wow. He's got a decent IQ for the game, but he's incredibly narcissistic, which probably keeps <laughs> him from playing any kind of basketball at a professional level. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I was helping him record a podcast with Blake Griffin. Yeah, and he would always joke that he would get points on him in a game. And oh, I, he would, he would. Right, but in my head, I didn't. I'd never seen Rick. I've heard he's good for the comedy league, but I always thought that was a joke. And yeah. now it makes me think. Oh no, he he's, would. He's yeah. good. Yeah, Rick's really. Yeah, he's he's surprisingly. You're just like no. Oh, I get it. Yeah, because like when he's on the court, he's not Rick Glassman that you see like <laughs> stand up or like neurotic. Like he is. He's an assassin on the court. Wow. Rip Morin too, actually. Rip Morin's a really good ball player. Willie Hunter's a really good ball player. He's super oh, wow. athletic. Yeah. Um, Jamar Neighbors, you'd think, because he's like he just looks like the like a Jamar a Neighbors specimen. doesn't isn't coordinated though, right? Or he is. He is with boxing. Boxing, yeah, yeah, but he does that all the time. Yeah, yeah, That's his thing. Yeah. But basketball, like, for some reason, I, I've never seen him play. I would just imagine him kind of not being good at basketball. A little bulky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but then, football, though, he lights you up. Yeah. Brent and Willie also, for some reason, surprised me that they're good at basketball. Brent really surprised me. Yeah. But that kid's, he's got a handle, he's got a shot. I mean, he's so fun to watch. And Willie's just like, I just athletically gifted, and he's just, and he's got a great basketball IQ also, so he's... He's a lot of fun to play with and watch because he's he's giving, he's competitive, he talks a lot of shit. <laughs> you just, I mean, you don't expect it. It's fun. So you go to San Diego to which Miracosta or no? I went to Mesa. Mesa, okay, Mesa yeah, College, the cool one. Yeah, yeah. Is that the cool one? That was the cool one. I thought. Yeah. So or for no, me, I, there was. Well, I mean, I remember Mesa was more, you know, closer to San Diego State, yeah. so there was more going on. But yeah. Miracosta was, you know, chill surf. Surfer vibe. I think it's like Orange County, though, isn't it? No, Miracosta is in Encinitas. Oh, so it's more of North. Okay. Yeah. Okay. North, there's Palomar North County, was like the big one because that's Palomar, the big, that was the big yeah. football school. Yeah. Palomar is huge, but that's East. Uh, San Marcos. Yeah. San Marcos. That's like not cool. No. Uh, yeah. No, not, if not you're really. Playing, that's I mean, just a junior playing, college. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just straight that. up. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, unless you're playing football. You know right. I mean? Right. Right. So that's where like Chad Ocho Cinco went. Oh, I didn't know he went there. I think Steve Smith went there too for a oh, second. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, actually. That cool. makes it cooler. Yeah. I, I took a class there once and dropped out of it. Yeah. It was too hard. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ended up graduating college, but I don't know how. So you went down there. You're going to school. You didn't graduate, did you? Or you did? Hell no. Yeah, I'm yeah. technically still a freshman, or I'm entering my <laughs> sophomore year. So what? <laughs> you entered school. What made you drop out of school? Uh, what made me drop out of school? Um, it was expensive, uh, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I mean, I was just like, I'm gonna be a, a poli sci major because that was just what I was getting decent cuts in, and I was just like, this seems like an easy enough major, and I'm gonna be a lawyer. Right? Poli sci sounds hard to me, but. Yeah, it it, it, it sounds easy enough. It, right. It's or, because well, anything with science in the end of it is always like you're, you're learning something, right? To like to a point where you're going to have to. It's always changing. You know, mm-hmm. science always changes. So you're going to be constantly um, hypothesizing, testing things. And political science, you're just testing. You're testing your popularity a lot, right? And you're testing the rules of the game, and that's what makes politics so dangerous. Also, so fun and exhilarating, uh, and also I think it's what makes humans love it so much, right? As much as we hate, we hate politics. We created it, and we keep having it because there's a structure to it, and there's a fun to it, right? There's a hierarchy to it, and it's 
It's insane, but we all keep subscribing to it. So, and I just in every this, facet of life. Yeah, too. like I really wanted to be a lobbyist because I was just every time I, I when I learned about it, right, and in, in these political science classes, uh, you'd be like, oh shit, this is like legalized pimping. You could do anything. Yeah, pretty much because they're asking for you to do anything. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, I'm gonna be a lobbyist, and then uh, I had this sexual psychology class. Right. Sexual psychology? Yeah, right? sexual that's, psychology. Because everything's cool like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're 19, 18 years old. Yeah. You're like, sexual psychology? Fuck yeah, bro. And you go in there, you're like, oh, this is the most scientific thing I've ever been a part of. It's so, it's it's disgusting. <laughs> it really is. It's, it, there's nothing sex, sexy about it. Sexual, totally. Sexy, not, not a bit. Um, but instead of like doing essays or uh, whatever's, me and uh, these dudes from like the Inland Empire, these two Jewish cats, uh, I probably know. We just we did sketches. We just shot sketches, and they were they were so cool. They were just like, "Oh my god, you should do stand up." And I was like, "You guys are fucking right, I should." And so it, these are just friends. That yeah, we, we were had, all funny friends. together. You had good yeah. chemistry, and you're like, "Let's do these fun videos." Yeah, just for fun. Yeah, and nobody in the class liked them. <laughs> we thought oh, you we made thought that we were class? killing. Yeah, dude, we thought we were killing. Uh, we're like, oh, they're gonna love this shit in class, and they just nobody got it. No one laughed. I mean, it was like they thought we were being. They thought they thought we were. <laughs> they thought we were being pretentious by like, oh, they don't want to do the work. They're just gonna like shoot sketches instead. But, but that was the option. She's like, you can shoot something or you can fucking speak in front of class. Oh, that sounds shooting something sounds way better, right? Because then you don't have to do public speaking over a Thank topic you. you don't like. Way better. You do it ahead of time, and then you're done. Pretentious? No, mm -hmm. they're just dumb for not doing it. I think they were mad that they were like, oh, we should have thought of this. But yeah, I mean, they're probably terrible, but we thought they were great. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do you still have them? No, <laughs> I think they have them. I would like to see yeah, that. The, you, you, should, you should reach out to I those guys. I did. They they won't give it to me. Why? Uh, this is year, This is also like, I don't know, like more than 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, they probably don't have them anymore. Yeah. But if is... they do, I want to see them. I, <laughs> I want to cut play it right here. I think it was yeah. about like, yeah, like me getting somebody pregnant or something. I was just like, <laughs> I, I was speaking True from experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, what a black guy, huh? <laughs> I am such a black guy. I, I think that was like my first thought too. I was just like, oh my God, I'm a fucking statistic. Like I live in this white town. Like how the fuck did like me and the only other black chick in town basically like, <laughs> <laughs> we're having kids now. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, God's little joke. It really was. It was like, oh, okay. So you do those sketches. They mm -hmm. say, they think you're funny and that you should do stand up. Yeah. Was that your first time where you thought, oh, I should, I should try stand up? Yeah, was that, that was moment? actually it. Yeah, it was those yeah. guys. I mean, I had seen it before, and I had seen it even in elementary class. I remember seeing it, and uh, which was crazy. It, I, I, looking back now, I'm like, oh, Chuck was just like reciting lines he had heard. There's no way he, like this 12 year old kid or 11 year old kid was just like writing these heaters. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like these clean heaters. I was like blown away by this kid. It was like fifth grade. It was a talent show. Oh, you, there was a fifth grader who did stand up at the yes. talent show. Dang. Yeah, Chuck. I, I want to know what yeah, Chuck's up to. I remember now. Chuck. He was like, yeah, fifth grade. I think it was in third or fourth grade. And he like he was like he looked like a big grown up at that point. <laughs> and he's doing these like he had like a deep voice and everything. He he looked like it was like Ray Romano doing stand up actually. Do you at think it he now. was doing his own jokes or do you I think do he was? I do not. Are, that's what I'm saying. I think he was looking back at it now. Cause I'm Either like, way, it's fun. Like dude, even if he was he doing Seinfeld it. jokes, yeah, it's still cool. But yeah, I don't. It had to be Regan or somebody because these are like polished great like one-liners he had a story in there too they were all clean for i mean there was it was four kids he was a kid on america's got talent before america's got yeah, talent he was ahead of his time i mean i don't know what happened to chuck but yeah he i mean he never did like anything like that ever again after that i think <laughs> he's like an engineer <laughs> that now that was actually. his cool moment yeah i was like oh because chuck, chuck wasn't even known as like a cool cat like that but when he did that like we all loved him after he'd that. see you he'd see your instagram he'd be like what i was the comedian not that could have been, been me yeah uh, but that was the first time I think I saw it live that wasn't a black person because every time I saw it before that was like Comic View, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, back in the 90s. Um, or Def Jam, you know? So I was just like... Which was bigger, Comic View or Def Jam? Def Jam, definitely. Yeah, Def Jam Absolutely. was huge. I mean, Def Jam creates Comic View. Uh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like HBO's Def Jam because of the popularity of the urban comedy blast. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Then they have, you know, BT's like, well, we can do that too. So Who's the better. most famous comedian that broke on Def Jam? On Def Jam? Yeah. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle broke from Def Jam? Dave Chappelle, Chris Tucker, Bernie Mac, uh, yeah, Seth the Bernie. Entertainer. Yeah, I knew Seth you know and Bernie. Like, yeah. For some reason, I didn't, Chappelle, I thought, I don't even know. Yeah, I he guess did, what uh, was his moment? He did this, this Batman joke. On Def Jam that blew yeah. up. 
I don't know if it or blew that, up. that was, but I mean, good, like he was considered good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, he's he's a part next, of that lore of day. yeah. He's a yeah. part of the lore of Def Jam because he did a set that kind of a thing. So I mean, if you're talking about who like who's the biggest alumnus from right, right. Def he's, Jam, he's one it would probably be him and Chris Tucker. Yeah, pretty cool. Bernie Mac. I mean, like probably yeah. If Bernie Mac yeah. is still alive, yeah. yeah. Bernie Mac's huge. Cedric. I mean, like they yeah they all did it. I'm surprised they haven't. Uh, they have remade it, but I'm surprised they haven't re remade it. They'll do it. They'll keep doing it today. Yeah. Yeah, because that's how this town is. You can't do like a new, you know, like a new black show. It's got to be this mm-hmm. one that we know because we know it's going to work. And it's a brand that whatever. Yeah, that's the way it goes. So what made you, they told you this was 1918. You're making sketches. These guys say to you, you should do stand up. 1918? 18. No, 18, 19 years old. Okay. Yeah, in yeah, your yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think about, yeah, 17, 18. Yeah, I'm like 18. Yeah, 18, 19. Yeah, right. freshman in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when do you go and actually try stand up? So How does then, that come about? Because I'm too young at that point. So like, I don't even know what, like, where to go. But yeah. Right? Yeah. Same. I, I, this is kind of my thing. I think the only other time I saw stand up, I think, was actually at, on a military base. And I think I was like interning for the summer. And it was these comics doing like military bases, right? So yeah. I did like a BFW hall. Mm-hmm. And I was working at a event or something like that. And I saw like Alonzo Bode and I think Kathleen Madigan, that kind of a thing. Oh, pretty good um, lineup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't get it, but obviously it was yeah. it was for officers and yeah. you know, higher ranking enlisted people. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. I was like, okay, that's stand up. I wouldn't want to do it in this place. Like, if this is stand up, I'm not doing this. Yeah, that's, <laughs> what? <laughs> Little weird, crazy gigs like that. Have you ever done a USO tour? No, yeah. no, no, no. I've no, always no. wanted to. But I've no. never done it. I, I don't know. Being in a helicopter, I was asked to do one thing. And I was like, I don't know, man. That helicopter thing and playing to that whole crowd. I mean, like those guys are like starving for entertainment, so it'd be great for your my psyche, and my ego. Yeah, but I'm like, what am I really trying to do here? You know, I'm supporting. <laughs> I want to give back to the troops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I grew up with the troops, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, not though, not the, not the. Yeah, I grew up with a bunch of sailors, and like, those guys are like they're kids. Yeah. So oh, I know yeah. what I, I know what kids like. It's like I'll just go play at a at a fucking frat house. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. No, here's where I think it well, yeah, it's pretty similar to a frat yeah. house, but I was gonna say like college kids are woke. Military is not right. woke. So I think it'd be more fun. Yeah, it's the military, uh, you could say yeah. the most fucked up shit in the world. Yeah, and they'd th- love those guys it. are like they're the blue collar guys, you know what yeah. I mean? They're, it's it's cool. I mean, because like a lot of the guys I did meet were like um they were at, I mean, because I worked at the gym, right? So a lot of, like, the sailors I met were, like, athletic dudes, like, you know, who played high school sports kind of a thing. Um, some went to, like, you know, major universities. Some didn't kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So it was cool to, like, like they, they, they're they not I, – I don't know what the stigma is. I mean, maybe, maybe it's with different branches. But with the sailors, I mean, those guys are, like – those guys are all entrepreneurs. They were just like, oh, yeah, I went to Utah University, so I'm, I'm working on this thing, working on this thing, I'm working on physical therapy here. There's a cast, like, I went to LSU, and I'm doing this, this, and this. And it's just like, okay – like even though like they're lower, you know, enlisted dudes who are like yeah, they work hard. 18, 19 years old, they're just like after this is done, I get my, you know, I get my, uh, college, my whatever, yeah. my GI bill, and I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go kill it. So yeah, I don't know. I think I think the military. I think from a liberal perspective, I think it's a bad rap for those guys that are going in right? totally because they're just going in to get the money. I mean, because yeah. after high school, it's like if you don't want to go to college and you're not athletic enough or you're not you don't have the scholarship to go, maybe to you know. Get yeah, something. if you're really poor. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, you're just like, all right, cool. Let me go get this, buy a truck, get a girl pregnant, and go it's overseas. It's a great opportunity for yeah. a lot of people. Absolutely. I agree. So Anyway, but... Uh, you're 18, 19. You don't know how to do stand-up, obviously, because yeah. there's no, I don't anything. There's I don't no know, podcast. I don't know anything. There's no... There's um, no guy. There's no how-to do stand-up. But then I started working at the Hard Rock Cafe in La Jolla as like a that's, host. That's, that's not around anymore, is it? No, it's yeah, gone yeah. now. It's been gone. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there was a guy, there was a stand up and he was like sponsored <laughs> by like, a, who also worked at Hard Rock. Yeah. He was a server and okay. he was a comic. And I was like, what? Who is this? Person? Joey Klecker. If you don't remember Joey. Uh, and he doesn't do it anymore. I think he does it up North. He's a, he's okay. like a teacher okay. in the, uh, yeah. In like the Bay area. Okay. Yeah. Joey Klecker. Great cat. Cool cat. Um, but yeah, he was like, he was a server at the Hard Rock and then, yeah, he was a comic and he was sponsored by like this weed company called Seedless. I thought he was like the coolest guy because of that. And I was like, that's so dope. And then, um, yeah, I was like, I just started going to the store in, uh, in San Diego. Hello out there, my little therapy patients, my unlicensed therapy listeners. Today I'm going to talk to you about getting more productive. We all have those days where we wake up late, where we don't do anything with our lives. But we all have a little side hustle We all have ambitions of starting something. For me, 
I sell my t-shirts on the side. I ship my old electronics out. I do a lot of little side hustles in order to get by, really. Comedy doesn't always cut it. The podcast doesn't always cut it. So whether if you started your own online store, your eBay store, your shirt company, your Etsy business, there is a product to help you, and that is called ShipStation. ShipStation is the number one shipping software for e-commerce sellers with more five-star reviews than anybody else. And I really think it could help you and your small business. You get amazing discounts with all the major carriers, UPS, FedEx, USPS, and you could compare those carriers each and every time you ship so you know you're getting the best price possible. I personally use it, like I said, to send out my T-shirts as well as electronics, my old electronics, because I'm constantly buying new computers, new graphics cards, and want to sell my old stuff so that I'm not just spending all my money. Right now, you can use my code therapy at shipstation.com for a 60-day free trial. That's two months free, no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to shipstation.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and type in Therapy at shipstation.com. Enter code therapy. Make ship happen. So you went, I, I grew up in San Diego. I didn't start comedy there, but I grew up mm-hmm. there. And I always thought that the comedy store, because I would drive by it, you know, a few times a year. Yeah. I always saw it. And in my head, because I was a kid, I thought that it was a store that sold whoopee cushions and like gag, right gag gifts. That's what I thought my whole life. That's so I didn't exactly know it was though, yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, the comedy store, they probably sell like joke books. And, totally. Yeah, and it's like a Spencer's gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. I, think, I thought the same thing, actually. When, yeah. I, when I thought comedy store, I was like, oh, it's just one of those like Spencer gifts. Like, I don't, I hate those joke shops. You know right, I mean? right. I was yeah. like, oh, cool, I guess. I was yeah. like, it's been there for years. Yeah, I'm like, what like, a lame I'll, name, the comedy store. In my head, I'm always like, how many people are buying whoopee cushions and, <laughs> and joke books? I'm like, how does this place support itself? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, this real niche market here. Mm-hmm. And right. then... I I don't even remember the age when I realized what it was because at when I was 21 I was in in northern California and I think yeah I think I yeah. probably didn't realize what it was until I started doing stand up Oh I, just, I still podcast. had no idea until like Joey yeah. took me I was just yeah. like oh this exists and then yeah. it had the ivy like this your background here Yeah so it looked like that. And you just couldn't find it. I mean, it was crazy. You know, you yeah. I told people, I said, here, like, where is this thing? Oh, it's under this, all this green. And now they they, they trimmed it because they're just like, oh, people keep driving by this place and know where <laughs> yeah. it is. Uh, but yeah, that place is So he was a incredible. server and you said to him, oh, I've kind of always wanted to try that. You know, no, I never, I didn't want to be lame like that. Oh, you were like, I, I'll go with you. I'll check it out. I just wanted to check it out. So yeah, I, just so think you, I was just like, you, oh, you did when, he said he, when he said he had a, a set, I was like, cool, I'm going to go check it out with you. I mean, like, I'm going to go support kind of a thing, you know? Who is he sponsored by? Seedless. Oh, like we, this, is that a that's a weed clothing company, right? Yeah. So this is two thousand yeah, Ocean Beach. Ten? When is this? This is two thousand and what do I meet 12? Joey? I meet Joey in two thousand some twenty? Twenty one maybe? Because I, yeah, I can get into the club, so I'm twenty one at this point. Uh so that is two thousand and six. Two thousand six. Okay. Yeah. Two thousand six, seedless. Sponsoring his stand up. Yeah. What does that mean? He just has to wear it on stage every time? He did, yeah. yeah. He was like proud to do it. And did, like did and every he, every, promo- every flyer he had was all, it always looked so fucking cool because yeah. like they did the graphics, you know what uh-huh. I mean? So it was always like, oh, this is he looked like a huge deal. Would he give them a shout out at, on yeah. his set? He'd be like, This set was sponsored by Seedless. Check just, it out. Yeah, yeah, it was it's always that. Yeah. It was always that. Every show he did, it was like sponsored by Seedless. So wow. yeah, it was cool. Um but yeah, and seeing Joey, and then just like, I just studied it after that. I really was just like, all right, I'll treat this like school then. If I'm not going to, because I was really like into it. I was like, all right, if I'm not going to like go to school and finish, mm-hmm. I'll see what this is about kind of a thing. And then like, I learned like a lot of comics kind of did that. There's like, I'll treat this like school. Right. So I just kind of took that approach. And then you, from there, so was it as soon as you saw him do his set at the comedy store? No, it took me like, like six to eight months. That's six to eight months after that. I like, just, I was like studying hard. I was like, but I was you there knew you every wanted to night. do it. Yeah, you I was like there ready. almost every night just kind of checking it. I was like one of those creeps in the back who's like checking it out, not really going up yet. Just like, oh, I want to get the nerve to do it. Mm-hmm. But I was really just looking to see who was good, what the jokes were, like, you know, what is a comedy club like? I had never been to one, you know? So it was just like six months of just hanging around. So by the time you started, the tapes, reading books, yeah. by the time you did your first mic, you kind of knew everyone. And everyone kind of knew who you were because you were hanging around all the time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it was kind of like, oh, Brian's gonna try it tonight. No, nah, no, nah, it, was, it wasn't like. Time. I mean, I didn't, I didn't meet the staff like that too. Got it. I just, yeah, it was, it was more like I hit the open mic scene. 
And then Joey invited me to a show after mm -hmm. I was doing like for like four months. And uh, yeah, that's how I like met all the staff like personally. And then I got hired eight months after, maybe, yeah. Six Fairly months after shortly that. after. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and at this time, it should be said, I think I wasn't around, but mm -hmm. at this time there was a lot less comedians than there are now. Well, it was all less clubs. A lot less clubs and comedians. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say yeah. that. There's, there's always a bunch of comedians. It's just, it, it, they can't get up, you know, but everything's yeah. their comedian. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there was only yeah, it was only the comedy store, uh, and that was the only club. That was the only like, one. Everything else was like a show or a room. I think the right. Comedy Palace was doing shows like three or four nights a week right. at that Greek Sean restaurant. Sean Kelly, right? Yeah. And then uh, there was Lestats was the hottest show in town. Yeah, like, that ran show by Mark Saratella yes. at that time. And then it was yeah, that was it. So, at this time, what was how did your first set go? Your very first one. Do you remember it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was it was the day after Christmas, two thousand six. Two thousand six. Okay. Yeah, and then I don't do like stand up like for all at all until like February two thousand seven. Um, but yeah, I remember it was like the day after James Brown died. Uh, I was in it was Ocean Beach at Winston's on Friday. Oh, I've done that, and that was my first set, and it was it was cool. I saw I meet Jesse Egan, Bob Hansen. Uh yeah, I just felt really comfortable there. Um, and those guys are so supportive. I don't know how this. I mean, the set went well. It went well enough to where I was just like, yeah, I get. There's the only so well you could do at that show totally. too. So yeah. yeah, and I had the confidence, and they were just so cool about it. I had the confidence to just go up at the store after that, and then my first set at the store was cool uh, enough to be like, all right, yeah, I got, I got, I'm, I'm in this now, you yeah. know. And then my first bomb, I remember, I was just like. I mean, I remember, I mean, you never, it's, it's weird. It's almost like losing your virginity in a way. You're like, you don't know how you're going to feel. Um, you always think you're going to be prepared for it because you're like, mm -hmm. oh, bombing. I, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do it gracefully like like Bill Burr or these other guys, right? And then it happens. You're just like, because you're just so new at it. You're not comfortable with the silence. Sure. You know? So, yeah. It, there's no feeling really yeah. that I could compare it to. Yeah. it's I'm trying to articulate it, but it's hard because you're like, Maybe oh, you'd be like having a really hot girl in front of you and not be able to get your dick hard. I don't know. I'm trying to think. No, just... because I think girls are very nurturing when it comes to that kind of yeah. a thing. Like, oh, that sucks, and they talk shit behind your back. But <laughs> <laughs> my personal experience. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think because th that crowd's talking shit in front of you at that point. They're just like, get it up. Well, I've never had. I've never bombed to the point. I don't think where people are like, you suck. Oh no, I've, it wasn't like that. It, but it I've was had silent it was, bombs. It yeah. was very like, oh my god, this this child doesn't know what he's doing. You know what I mean? We right. have to be respectful. That, that was that's the most hurtful one. Though. They're just like. They're not like, make us laugh, motherfucker. They're right. more just like, oh my gosh, I hope, like, uh, uh, something, you know? I was so naive. I never thought it would happen to me because the first three or four sets I did, I actually, they were hot shows yeah. with people my age and I did really good. Not yeah. saying I was good, but no, I did no, no, good. No, 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 exactly. Yeah. But that, that's what keeps you coming back because those first mm. few sets were like, you're you're doing well. Because I'm telling you, mm. if, I, if I'd have bombed my first set, I don't know if I'd still be doing this. Same here. But the first few sets, you're just like, okay, okay. I think I got this yeah, shit, you're bro. Like, this is. I thought it was easy. I was totally. doing new stuff every time too. I was like, <laughs> yeah. new sets each time. I saw people doing the same jokes. I'm like, what a bunch of pussies. Right, because the same jokes exactly, every time. Exactly, exactly. I was like, this. Yeah. Is, I'll I'm, never be that kind of. Comic, I was like, I'm right. so funny. I was like, dude, this is like, I'm a comedian. Yeah. And then I do that one show where it's crickets, and I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is hard. This is actually a hard thing. Yeah, yeah, it's different. It it that's yeah. I think that's what makes you better because you're just like, okay, I'm back on Earth. Ah, oh, sucks here, but I'm here. So <laughs> yeah. you know, but yeah, that's uh, and that's yeah, that's the adrenaline. And then you start really. I mean, God, dude, I after a bad set, it's I feel like I feel like I'm gonna kill myself. I'm just like, I hate this. I can't believe this. This is what I gotta do the rest of my life and feel like this. And then you sleep it off. You're like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you're like, I'll be fine. Yeah, it's just it, it takes it takes a night. So you do it for eight months. You get a job at La Jolla. Mm hmm. And, yeah, yeah. La Jolla. And, and then, then uh, what made you move to LA? What made you make the jump? So you're obviously I just kept hearing from guys who kept coming down, you know, they were just like, Why are you wasting your twenties here? Like, you know, like you're funny enough, you're young enough, you have a look enough, like you need to be up there kind of a thing. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you're, yeah, right. Um and then I remember Joe Charles and Robert Larry were telling me, who were the big comics down there at the time. They were like, Listen, if you're gonna move, I mean, go to New York or LA. If you wanna be a stand up Moved to New York, right? If you want to be everything else, you go to LA. And because I was like, well, I don't really like cold weather. I don't even know New York like that. Every time I go to New York, at that point, because I had family over there. Every time I mm -hmm. went, we'd be you in the hood. You got family everywhere. Yeah, I got family. Yeah, black people are everywhere. So you know, <laughs> we got we got it everywhere. So yeah, and every time I go to like 
you know, because my family lived in the hood <laughs> in, in, in New York. And every time I was out there, I was always like, I don't like it here. And not because it was the hood, because like we obviously were sightseeing. So you see the other parts. I still just didn't like it. So I was like, I'm not moving to New York. It's cold. If you go, go to New York there, in yeah. the winter, it's going to be hard to really like it's gross. it. gross. Yeah. Yeah. It's just dirty. Yeah. It's freezing. It. There's good food. Stinks. I mean, like, but... listen, I know because this is being recorded, but it's like I've said this ad nauseum. New York, I get it. You're a real city. I love the people there. But there, there's it, advantages. The, the subway city system is, is cool. The city is so up its own ass. The city itself is so up its own ass. I mean, with the price of living, the trash on the streets that you haven't like, how come you haven't figured that out? And London has like they got destroyed by World War II. And they fucking figured out how to, like, get rid of the trash. And there's more people in London. <laughs> but that, like, okay, I agree with you. 100%. Yeah. It's dirty. It's cold. It's not the best ever. But, you know, L.A. is also riddled with homeless people. There's traffic. I could be horrible. homeless here before I could be homeless out there. It's cold out there. Oh, yeah. It's smaller As a homeless place. person, you'd rather be Because, by the way, you're spending, like, three grand on, like, a, a studio apartment. That's crazy. Yeah. And you have, oh, to get, like, you have to get, like, six other guys to live with you. Yeah. I got to do that here. I live on the streets. It's warm here, right? Yeah. They give me a tent to live here, you know? <laughs> I, I just feel like it's easier to be homeless out here. The oh, cost 100%. Of, the cost yeah. of living isn't as high. I mean, like, no, I'm not paying I'm, nine bucks a bottle for water But here. I'm saying the homeless issue here is, a, a, in my mind, so bad, it's a reason why it's, a lot of people probably wouldn't want to live here. Oh, Because there's yeah. so many you homeless live here. everywhere. Yeah, if anybody's yeah, like, actually going to watch this and listen to this, yeah, don't move here. <laughs> it's it's New Gotham. It's crazy here. It's Yeah, it's, it feels in a lot of parts, I'm not even exaggerating, in many parts of Los Angeles, and these are million, multi-million dollar homes, you feel like you're in a third world country. Yeah. And it's can be scary to walk down the street. I mean, listen, we've both There's been to Tijuana, which is a third world yeah. city. Yes, in a, yeah. in a third world country. And that's not country. that big of a difference from L.A. I mean, it I is. I mean, there's parts. It is. Yeah, there is. It is. Yeah, but I mean, there's, all of downtown L.A. Skid now. Row. Well, that's it's that's all of downtown now. Have you noticed yeah. that? Like yeah. how like Skid Row is actually, it's, it's expanded to every single block of, of downtown L.A. now? That's crazy. Yeah, I've never seen that. I've never seen bad. what's happening over here. It's, it's a lot. It's crazy. It's bad. Yeah. It's scary. Venice Beach. It's scary. So you moved to LA, the, but at this time it wasn't as bad as it is now. No, no, it was cool. You moved here. I you, was homeless. I for assume, a second, yeah. were, you were homeless. Yeah. Like, but you, when you say homeless, sleeping in your car. Sleeping in my car. And then I lost my car. My car got repoed. Yeah. Because I the got only a, other person uh, I, I know got his car got repoed was Jaron. Yeah. So I got out car. here, and then I had this like new Nissan Sentra 2005, right? So I was like ten, five years old at that point. But I it was new to me. Um, and then yeah, I just. I got a, I was driving home late from the store from working, right, one night, and I had had a drink, literally like one. Yeah. And then I got pulled over. Oh, you got a DUI? No, I got suspicion oh. of a DUI, and they didn't give me an exhibition of speed, but it took a few court dates to like to get through with that. But that, wow. that still cost me a bunch of money. Yeah, that sucks. So then I, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, a exactly. Suspens- uh, Dude, when I got to the court What was it called? A suspicion yeah, of a DUI? Uh, yeah, suspicion of DUI, because I blew under the, I blew under the limit. Yeah. So then the cops are like, well, we have discretion to bring you in if it's 0.05 or, you know, yada, yada, or over. And I blew under the legal limit, which is 0.08. I think I blew like 0.07 or something like that. So they're just like, well, under you our discretion. You barely made it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're like, well, it's enough to be like, we what can take. What a dick. They should. Well, yeah. If they, someone goes to 0.07, were. you go, hey, you got, just so you know, if I was a cop, yeah. I'd be like, just so you know, you were very lucky you got a .07. Yeah. Maybe wait a little longer take, next yeah, time. You like, can go be home. Cool. And they knew I was like, I lived around the corner, or at least I was going to sleep yeah. in the park around the corner. <laughs> oh, did they know you were homeless? <laughs> no, they didn't know that. Uh, but I told them I, I lived, because I was, I was living with my girlfriend at the time, yeah. but she, uh, we only had one key. She had like the key to the door, mm-hmm. and uh, she was just tired of uh, waking up at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, because like, I, worked yeah. at the, I worked at the store, Yeah, and we'd get off, like, at 4 sometimes. Pretty selfish of her, but okay. Continue. I mean, it's fine. I mean... It's fine. She's a good Imagine person. if a, you were dating a girl and she were, got off four in the morning. You're like, hey, can you just sleep in your car? Because I don't want to get up to open the door if you're yeah. four in the morning. <laughs> okay, so just sleep in your car. I mean, we had a tumultuous relationship. We were yeah. toxic. I mean, like, I get it. I mean, and her dog was like a rescue. And like every time I came in, it would spray. And it's just, uh, it was just hard for her to like it was clean it. Thing. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like, okay. it's more, I, she has to wake up at seven to go to work. And then like, you know, I'm coming in at four and I'm making like crazy minimum wage at that point, like 525. Yeah. An hour. Nothing. You know what I mean? No so tips, it's like, nothing. she's basically carrying everything. And like, I'm just coming in to be like, hey, I'm the penis. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> so she was just like, I don't need the penis. Just like, you can sleep in your car until I wake up at seven. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. Uh, and I got it. I was just like, it's only two hours, whatever. Cause you know, we're getting off so late. Yeah. But at this point I got enough early and then she was just like, well, I don't trust you. 
because you always say you're getting up at 10. Because I have a, I have a problem with time. I am that black person who is late to everything. 20 minutes late today. It's not 20 that minutes bad. late today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if I say, I, I, especially with her, it was I was so selfish and, and, and mean with my time with her. I would always be like, oh yeah, I'll be over there in 10 minutes and I wouldn't come over for like an hour. Just mean and rude. Like like, yeah. her, like her time is invaluable. It's right. fucked up. So she didn't trust me when I got off at 10 o'clock because like... Yeah, in her head, that's like, that she's can like, be midnight. Yeah. Exactly. She's like, I got to get to sleep. And I'm like, you know what? I get it. So I stayed, I hung out, watched everything. It didn't work that night. It was cool. Ate like a potato that uh, my homeboy, um, what's his name, Cisco gave me. And then, yeah, I had like a drink. He came and said, here's a potato? From, uh, what's that place called? Uh, Saddle Ranch? Saddle mm. Ranch. Oh, right, yeah, right. They, they, yeah, they had big yeah. potatoes, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, cool, this will sober me up if I'm even drinking. And I had like that one drink. And then, uh, yeah, the cops were like, ah, yeah, yeah, point oh seven, but we have discretion. And then uh, they took me to jail, or holding. And then- uh, Oh, you were in a holding cell and everything? yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah. see that's like that's racist. Yeah, it's weird because my, uh, my my public defender said the same thing. He was just like, "You blew under the limit. Why, what are you doing here?" I was just like, "I don't know, man." They said discretion. Yeah. He's just like, he's like, "This is like a it's like a drive all black." If that cop wasn't a black cop, that's racist. It was a black. I was a couple. It was a couple white guys with glasses. Yeah. Yeah, like security guard looking guys. Damn. Uh, but yeah, he even said he was just like, "This, this seems like a like a driving while black." And I was like, "That's real." He's like, "Well, it can be." I'm like, "That's crazy." <laughs> But I also had like an afro. I do. I was getting pulled over every time when I had my afro. It was something really. Weird. Yeah. I, by the way, wouldn't even be driving. It's just, it's would just still like, get pulled over. Yeah, I guess it's it's you know what it is kind of like having a red car probably. Yeah, it was yeah. It's just it was it's just more attention I look, to yourself. Yeah, like yeah. hey, black guy with your scraggly hair and yeah, that kind of a thing. I remember like with David Taylor. I'd be, we were we were coming from basketball one time. I had my afro, and I was in the back seat, and Willie Hunter's in the front, and a cop pulls us over, and he's just like questioning David about me. So I'm saying, like, this is happening even when I'm not driving. Yeah. You know, it was just, I had a target. So I cut my hair. Because <laughs> I'm like, there's just, I can't keep, this can't keep happening. That's uh, unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, they, I, I know, I was working, I was working phones the next day, too, so I thought I was going to get fired. I was like, oh, I'm out of, Cal I'm out of, I'm going back to my parents' house. Like, I can't go back to San Diego, you know what I mean? Because um, I thought I was going to lose my job. I was yeah. like, well, I'm going I'm to lose my car, right? Because they, they. So you are stressed. I was, I was losing my mind. I called. Yeah. My girl, and she just didn't believe me. And I was like, I put myself in the situation. You know what I mean? So I, I get that she's not feeling me. But uh, yeah, so I get to the station. They're just like, all right, do you want to take a blood test or take a, a breathalyzer? I was like, you know what? I want no mysteries. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want you guys saying I blew over when I know I blew under, and you guys know I blew under. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's all good. But if you take a blood test, it has to go to Sacramento, and you say you have to work tomorrow, that could take 12 hours. I'm just like, fine, it's like another breathalyzer, right? I'm like, God, this, that feels weird that they did that to me. And now it should be even lower because time has passed. And it was. So then I blew like .02 or something like that at that point. And they were just like, all right, so we're not going to impound your car. I'm just like, dude, what is going on here? Yeah. And so I was like, all right, well, can I get out of here? They're like, well, let's just wait a couple hours. So then basically, yeah, I'm in holding with a couple gangbangers and whatever the fuck. And then, Jesus. And then I'm just waiting to get out. And I'm like, I hope I get out because I have to work at 10 a.m. I didn't get out till I didn't get out of there till noon. And I'm uh, like, I thought I thought Dean was gonna fire me because Dean was the uh, the manager. He wouldn't be understand. I didn't. I never knew Dean. But if I, I you were like, a, I, I was in phone. jail. They, yeah. They, yeah, they had every. I couldn't even call anybody. I had that one call and I made it on my girl, and you know she yeah. was just like, "Fuck you." So I was yeah. like, "Ah." So I get out of jail. I'm running right. I had to like walk all the way to my my car. So I'm going from Van Nuys to um, uh, Encino. So I walk from the Van Nuys it's horrible the Van Nuys courthouse area to the holding area, the Van Nuys jail to. Uh, where my car was, they put it like a park and ride over in Encino. So I had to go like walk over there. It was like five miles over the fuck. Grab that, probably two miles. Grab that and then I uh, get to work. And like nobody gives a fuck. That's why I love the comedy store. Because it was like, I got there at like 2 p.m. They didn't even know. They're like, oh, I nobody, guess you were late. <laughs> this is back when this place was like, wasn't killing it. Yeah. And like, dude, nobody called. Right. Nobody called. Right, right, right. Like nobody called. Nobody's trying to go to the show that night. Dude, nobody even called. now, it's so online that... All the calls are, this is literally 90% of the calls. Hey, I see online it's sold out. Is it really sold out? Can I have a ticket? That's nine out of 10 calls is, well, is that call. And you're like, yep, it's sold out. That's why it says sold out. If we could right. sell more tickets, we would. We want more, We want your money. Trust me. We want me. your money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like, all right, I get it. So. So would you say your first success mm -hmm. when you maybe didn't have to think uh 
oh, I have to work shifts at the comedy store was Roast Battle? Was that? No, because I still work shifts. I mean, I wanted to work shifts. Yeah, you worked a long time. Yeah. You worked longer than I think, mo from my perspective, mm -hmm. as a door guy, I was like, why is he still working here? I know, like, I know. Probably like here. two years past. Yeah, because I was like, uh, I was a pay Even now you work there. Yeah. I worked at the store, but now it's different. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was just working phones at, at that point. I wasn't like, I wasn't seating anybody. I don't think I sat anybody when I became a paid regular. Um, but I was still working no, phones. No, yeah. But even, I, even but, like, yeah, because I, I didn't sell. Uh, well, our first season of Rose Battle even was in 2016. Was I still there? I don't know. I don't remember, but I do remember, and I'm not, I didn't know your financial situation, but I do yeah. remember probably a year of you working phones in my head. I'm like, is he just doing this for fun? Like, why is he? Yeah. I mean, no, I, I think it was for the, for the, just for the check, you yeah. know? And then like I was doing gigs around, you know, it was just to have another stream. So yeah, yeah. I was like, this is easy. You yeah, know? it is easy. Yeah. yeah it was, was two days a week. But, uh, Three days a yeah. Week. So would you say you're... What claim to fame? Your 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 uh yeah. My biggest thing is roast battle. Obviously. Roast battle was, yeah. it, but that was that your first thing. Did you have any other little minor blips or things where you're like, oh fuck yeah? Yeah, I think um, when I got my manager, I think that was like my first little blip. I was like yeah. sick, uh, and then yeah, when I became a when I yeah, it was like one of those NBC diversity showcases. Uh, we had all done well, kind of a thing, mm -hmm. um, and that was another one. That was like that. That was a cool. That was a cool moment. I didn't get finalist, but it was cool to finally like break through to that. To be in front of industry and do good. No, nah, not necessarily. I mean, because like I had done that before, but it was like for this one. Just to, the peers that were that were in that this one was cool. Uh, but I guess like you would, we had done it like two or three times before that. But this one was cool. One I time like. I uh, I don't even know why I did. I was just you know a young comic doing mm -hmm. literally anything I could. But they were doing the diversity showcase, I think, at the Comedy Palace. Yeah, that's what I'm talking Diego. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like me and a couple other dudes, we drove down to do it. I'm not even diverse. I got mm -hmm. no chance at that. But Really? You're Jewish. I yeah, then I don't think Jews Jews count as diverse in really? in Hollywood. Are you sure? In my opinion. I've that's never crazy. I've never felt diverse in LA. I felt diverse my whole life until I came to LA. Interesting. Because I remember my my very Scandinavian looking ex girlfriend who was a comic at the time. Uh, she went. She wasn't. I mean, I was even saying, like, oh, you're a white. Well, woman. no, What's they would still let you? me do it. Yeah, totally. But I don't think there's an actual chance of a right. Jew getting the final uh, I hear of that. NBC Diversity. I hear that. But I drove down, like, I think late at night to do it, to wake up early the next day and wait in line to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I slept in and missed it. Oh, did you <laughs> so really? I drove for nothing. Well, that was the but, one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's. Yeah. The, I remember you got that one, actually. I remember you missing it, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. So the, apparently I uh, should have been there. Should have been there. But yeah. I don't even remember my jokes at the time or if I really should have been there, if I was any good. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah, but I think, uh, yeah, I did like a show of the stats. Yeah, this is eight years ago. Um Nine years ago, yeah, and it was it was cool. That was like my first one. I was just like, I love this. Like, it's like I got a an in front with Comedy Central. I got my manager at that point, who was like managing Steve Byrne when he had Sullivan and Sons at the time. So he yeah. was a really hot manager legit. At the yeah. Time. yeah, yeah. So it was cool. That was like my first thing, and then Rust Battle obviously has been the thing. Yeah, the Rust Battle is badass. That and it's just not is it just not only is the Rust Battle obviously a dope show, but. Mm -hmm. It's cool that it started so organically from nothing. You know what I mean? That's that's the I like story that too. of Rose Battle yeah. makes it even cooler. Yeah, it's we didn't try like, to do it. Yeah, it wasn't like here's the thing. I've been doing comedy for ten years. I'm gonna pull all. I'm gonna get all my famous friends to come, and we're gonna do this thing. It's just like literally from an open mic, organically got its structure, got the heat, got the celebs in there. Yeah, it was cool. That uh, was pretty cool. That was cool. Yeah, got the TV show from TV it. It was literally was cool. organic. I mean, it became like a, it's an international thing. I mean, it's yeah. every fucking where. So yeah, and cool. it was not a planned out. You know, yeah. it wasn't like a rich guy came in and was like, "Here's what we're gonna do." Right. It was a shitty open mic in the belly room of the comedy store that morphed into yeah an international hot yeah. show. It's cool. That that the origin's cool. I mean, the story's always going to be cool about Rose Battle. But now, you know, living in it is like. I mean, I love the show. I, Are you sick of it at all at this no, point? No, it's been I, a while. I still love it, and here's why I love it still because the jokes are they're dark. A lot of them are succinct. They're really the the economy, What's that mean? The, the What's that word mean? Words are really small. Succinct yeah. means just like they're really short and clean. Um, but uh, I just like it. yeah because you're going to hear some new jokes you never heard before. They're never going to be said again for the most mm -hmm. part. Uh, they're gonna try to never be said again, right? There's been Unless people, there's been a couple maybe parallel thought, you know. There's, mm -hmm. It happens, but yeah, 
there's been like, there's been yeah. accusations of oh they took my joke from roast battle three years ago it's like i don't think they tried to sure. do that it, but sure yeah. Who cares yeah okay. <laughs> it's roast battle i mean like yeah. it's the survival of the fittest so i mean whatever that means but uh yeah i, I don't know I, I just it's it's so fun to see to see like it's the basis of it is just like well i want to talk more shit about you but there's so much love around it i, I don't think i've ever seen that because I think the, the competition of comedy is always so like, well, I'm funnier than that guy, I'm funnier than that guy. And then when it's actually like happening, right? Like you're going head to head with this person. And it's not your set, you're just talking about each other. Yeah, right? you have to be funny in a different way. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, there's such a respect factor that happens that there's like this byproduct of love that happens out of it. I think people, when you hear about Rose Battle, you're like, oh, that bullying show. Then you get there, you're like, oh, this is, there's there, there's a lot of fun and love involved. Do you still do the thing where you say hug it out after? Because I remember in the beginning. I know with COVID, you, you can't do, do it. You can't do it with COVID. Oh, well, no, no. Obviously not COVID, yeah. but just normal time. I don't say it because of COVID anymore, no. Oh, will you bring it back? Yeah, as soon as people fucking get over their fear then of COVID. Then you'll say hug it out. Yeah. Yeah, unless people. unless they're overweight, then I can't say that. Then they might get COVID. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're vaccinated now. No, if they're vaccinated, then yeah, you can hug it out. Yeah, what point? June fifteenth. It's supposed to be good to yeah, go, right? I mean, I don't know. You talk to your fucking your governor buddy. See if because uh, he's like, I don't <laughs> I mean, know. I'm, I've I been good know. to go the whole time. Yeah, I, I literally am a COVID denier. Yeah. So well, good. Not not that it's not real. Just I don't care about it. It's I not Ebola. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's like I've it's never not, been scared of it. This yeah. exactly. Yeah. But it's also like people will say to that of, well, you don't care about other people. Right. Like, the mutations are gonna kill everybody and da 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 da. I'm like, sure. But that's also to say like it doesn't mean I want to kill anybody. Yeah, I don't want to kill anyone. And if someone no, thinks it's, it's uh, not saying that I don't want to. I'm oh, saying like, yeah. Like <laughs> I'm actually into population control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the right angle there. I think it was uh who was it? Josh. Potter came in here and he goes, if someone tells me I don't care about people, I'd say, yeah, I want to kill your grandma. I, w I hope they die. I hope yeah. I give it to them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it's your grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to specifically kill your grandparent. Yeah. Like I know like Luke Schwartz is like, don't kill my dad. I'm just like, dude. Oh yeah. He's crazy. About I'm it. like, dude, your dad's like middle age, healthy enough. He's not overweight. He's fine. I mean, like we're probably going to get for that. I'm surprised Luke Schwartz said that to you because Luke Schwartz loves black people. He does, but Have he also loves his, he also thinks his dad isn't going to survive COVID, which is like, it's kind of a shot at his dad. <laughs> yeah. Like is his dad like, the biggest pussy yeah, in the I'm world? Just like, yeah. Like your dad's going to survive COVID. He's fine. Is, a, is Augusta yeah. Wynn going to take down your dad? Yeah. It's my black family I should be worrying about. Never done roast battle because I'm a pussy and it scares, I, I could not handle someone roasting me. Why is that? I don't know, because, you know, I've been around since it was the open mic, so mm -hmm. I've I've had an opportunity to say, hey, I'd like to do that, but I've never wanted to because I've always, I'm too sensitive. I know even if it's a joke and someone says something mean to me, I think I would be, like, crushed a little bit on the yeah. inside. So I've, that's why I've never done Roast Battle. Not that Quincy you were Weekly thinking had a, that. had a but, good thing about it. He was like, uh, I would do it just to hear what people think about me. Well, yeah, it's because I'm already insecure about that. About what people think, and I know I shouldn't be. I know it who would, cares it what would people make, think. It would make you go full tilt. I think it would make me cry. Yeah. Late. I wouldn't cry in the moment, but I think I'd go home yeah. and be like, "Oh my god!" No, it does hurt. I mean, like yeah. when people talk about you, it does hurt. I mean, like yeah. I, I think people forget that, like, yeah, these guys are gladiators, but they still go home and cry about it. Yeah, like I've known many a battler who's like, I, they, they've cried about it. Oh, and I've seen like almost fight breaks out, break out too in the room. No, somewhere. but no fights have brought. No broken fights have broken out, out yeah. but I've seen people like not take it as a joke you know at the end right. of the roast they're like fuck yeah fuck this really guy. You, you've know. been I, in the room no i who? think uh i remember i i'm gonna edit out his name because he's a friend but i remember watching one's early roast oh yeah at the yeah, end yeah. of the at the end of the roast he was like about to fight the guy yeah and we're like that. dude it's a roast but like what yeah, are you yeah, what are yeah. you doing was that schwartz i don't remember <laughs> that i don't even remember who it was, was that it, it might have, i don't remember but i remember at the end i was thinking like why are you getting so heated you know what you signed up for. That you're just right. roasting. Like this is a comedy yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. God, that's crazy. That's so, that's so many battles. It's so long. Yeah. You're running the studio right now at the comedy store, right? The basement. Is that still? Yeah, I'm that's the, what I heard. Yeah, I'm the content guy. Yeah. You're the you're the content guy. So what does that entail? Is that just creating content for their YouTube and social media, or what is your what I mean, is your honestly, job I, responsibility? I take their approach as we are. When you say content guy, it's more like a marketing tool, right? Because you're you're trying to tell comics, you're trying to market to comics, like, hey, this place is cool. Not only can mm -hmm. you do a set here, you can probably flesh out an idea here for maybe a, a pilot you want to do, a script you want to do. For you know, like there's so many things you can do because we have so much equipment now. Mm -hmm. um, you can podcast, you can 
you can shoot a sketch, right? You can you can shoot a video podcast. You can mm -hmm. shoot a video anything. Um, so I think we're just trying to market cool shows, cool content, and just let people know that the Comedy Store is the greatest comedy club on earth. I think people know that. I mean, the right? sellers, the sellers, seller really rivals, good. The yeah, sellers really good. But they're different. They're, they're, they're different. There's they better, always going to be. They have better comics, yeah. Well, once in, <laughs> <laughs> once in LA, one's in New York. You can't come. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. But no, but I think it's. Um, I think New York does have better comics in LA oh, yeah. as a whole. Like, yeah, there's, a, I, I, there's the, obviously the vibe, amazing comics the vibe in LA. is different. Yeah. And yeah. I think that um, with the store, uh, you know, there's a regime change right now, too. And it's, yeah. you know, it's. It's going to be different in L.A. for a long time right now because uh, of all the guys who have kind of left. So now you're going to see something different in, for the generations to come because every show you're going to see is going to have two to three women on the lineup. And that didn't happen before. Yeah. So this is a progression uh, in a positive and an upward mobility thing. Um, and we're going to get to see it. You know, maybe we won't see it in our lifetime, but I think it, oh, uh, we're gonna it's gonna be this we'll, year. And, and then and we'll see we'll see the lineups. I'm saying, but yeah. in the next five six years, you know what I mean? Um, we'll get to kind of see what was going on because this is going to inspire tons of girls, right? Because right. all the it, 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 just tons of people it, 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 like okay. Well, if all these people are doing it, then why can't we jump in here and do it? And I mean, like, people of all kinds of things. Like, there's a big trans movement right now in comedy. You know, there's a big, um, uh, there's like, there's there's just a big emotionality movement, I feel like, that's happening in show business. And uh, they're trying to lead the charge, which is why they, they're they writing letters to, to Israel to stop, uh, to, to create peace in the Middle East. Wait, who's writing letters to Israel? Did you read about this when the, yeah. the, the whole ethnic cleansing was happening? No, who's Israel writing a letter? Hamas? Who's writing a letter to Israel? Like 125 uh, Hollywood types wrote uh, to the letters Middle East to, to create peace in the Middle East. Like that's gonna. Help. I mean, I don't understand what's happening. Yeah. Ever since COVID happened, people have lost their minds. So. You know what would have helped peace in the Middle East? Voting Trump back into office. You get rid of there Trump. Been, you're getting been rid of peace in the Middle East. They like him, but they just got rid of Netanyahu. So maybe there will be. You know, he's kind of like their Trump. So yeah, yeah. You know. We'll see. So, so that's we'll what. See. So, what you do at the comic store is all content. So, if some, it's all yeah. It's, so, it's if all, a comedian's like, content. "Hey, I can help you. Yeah. We can help you do that. We can help you. We can do. If you want to do a record, we can do a, do a record. If you want to do mm -hmm. a visual album, we can do a visual album. Right? right. So, there's just so many things we can do. There's so many. Mm -hmm. It's it's such an incubation uh, space that yeah. I think we're just trying to market and say like, hey, come fuck with us, and we can hopefully flesh out some of your ideas. Uh, and also like, you know, letting our fans know like, hey, these guys are multi-talented, multifaceted. They're not just stand-ups. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, come fuck like with it. us. I like it. All right, well, thank you for doing the podcast. Thanks for having me at 9.30 in the fucking morning, Ari. We picked it together. We picked 9 the time 50, together. Actually, that's what time 50, that's here, right. So. Thanks for doing it. God bless you. And we'll see you guys next week. You're listening to You're listening to Unlicensed 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 Therapy with Ari Manis Ari Manis episode of unlicensed therapy make sure to leave a five-star review on apple podcast and i will read it on the show also i left a phone number down below if you want to call in and ask for some advice i will play your voicemail on the next episode I'm trying to think if there's anything else to promote or talk about go to arimanis.com for my upcoming shows and Ari's Apartment Comedy Festival coming up, and you guys know what to do. Thank you so much. Comment below. Goodbye.